He's much too modest. Most of the ideas that I have come through his knowledge of the gospel, and I'm grateful for that. Several years ago, when Sister Belle Spafford was general president of the Relief Society, she went to a rest home and visited the Relief She said that the women there were between the ages of 75 and 90. They were ambulatory. They were bright and alert and able to take care of themselves. And she attended the Relief Society with them. It was a well-organized Relief Society. The lesson was given by the people who took part were alert and attentive, and their contributions were marvelous. And she felt very good about that Relief Society. She had an opportunity to speak with many of them individually after that, and she was a little discouraged. They all professed in their testimony meeting that they could endure to the end. That was the thing they prayed for and hoped for. And when she talked to them, one woman said, Oh, no, I don't attend sacrament meeting. I don't think the Lord expects me to do that now. Another woman said, no, I don't pay my tithing. I don't think that's required at this stage in my life. Another one said, I wouldn't have tasted tea when I was younger, but now I have a cup every day, and I don't think it matters. Financially well off, said her children didn't need her money, and she didn't quite know what to do with it. And when someone suggested perhaps she could donate it to charity or give someone who needed it, oh, no, she didn't want to do that. Sister Spafford was... Their lives just did not conform to their testimony and their desire to endure to the end. I came to this idea of looking about up enduring to the end from a release I lesson I gave several years ago, and that was the name of it, Endure to the End. Well, to me, enduring seems to mean suffering, oh, gritting your teeth, bearing it, just holding on, <laughs> hanging in there, I guess is the expression. You just kind of brace yourself until life's over. This negative feeling of endure to the end. So I took the Book of Mormon and Concordance and I checked all of the references and oh, what a difference it made in my understanding of enduring to the end. It's not a negative thing. And I have, I have scriptures here that are not all of them, but the ones that are probably the major ones on this idea of enduring. Nephi, in 1 Nephi 22, 31, said this, If ye shall be obedient to the commandments, and ye shall be saved at the last day. And so that's our first clue. You endure to the end by keeping the commandments. And that's not always an easy thing, is it? In Alma 38, verse 2, this is Alma when he gives a blessing, and this is to Sheblon. And he says, And now, my son, I trust that I shall have great joy in you because of your steadiness and your faithfulness unto God. For as you have commenced in your youth to look to, look to your God, even so I hope that you will continue in keeping his commandments, for blessed is he that endureth to the end. In this statement, Alma not only talks about the need of being steady and faithful to he seems to equate keeping the commandments with enduring to the end. Again, this positive need to endure to the end in keeping the commandments. In 2 Nephi 9, verses 23 through uh, Jacob talks about the Lord. He says, He commandeth all men that they must repent and be baptized in his name, having perfect faith in the Holy One of Israel. Now that's a challenge. How do you have perfect faith in the Holy One, or they cannot be saved in the kingdom of God. And if they will not repent and be baptized in his name and endure to the end, they must be damned. For the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. Jacob is speaking what God has said. This need to be baptized, to repent, and to What's that use? Having perfect faith in the Holy One of Israel. I think the one made me sit up and take notice was in, thir in first, I'll get to in second Nephi, 31st chapter. Unless a man shall endure to the end in following the example of the Son of the living God, he cannot be saved. Example of Christ. He was obedient to his father. He did everything that was expected of him. He followed him in every way. He has set the example for us. 
I think it was Eliza R. Snow that wrote, he marked the path and led the way. Every point defined to light and life and endless day where God's full presence shines. If we want to get back to his presence, then we follow the example of the Son of God. And we endure to the end in following him. We don't pick a time in our life and say, I followed far enough, now I'm going to rest. It doesn't work that way. Also in Second Nephi, <coughs> I used this yesterday, but I think it's necessary again. Nephi says that after you've gotten into this straight and narrow path, that is, the ordinances of the gospel is all done. He says, Nay, for ye have not come thus far, save it were by the word of Christ, with unshaken faith in him, relying wholly upon the merits of him. We do not have the merits. He does. It's his merits on which we must rely. And then, wherefore ye must press forward with the steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope, of God and of all men, wherefore he shall press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ and endure to the end. Thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. He brings out these principles of faith, hope, charity, and the word of Christ as we press forward, endure to the end. A couple of weeks ago we had a lesson in Relief Society. It was the one on the hold of the rod, and it was on feasting on the word of Christ. The teacher brought in a beautiful place setting and put it on the table with her nice silverware and crystal, and then she had a little cardboard box from snack foods, and she said, imagine that this is a nice Thanksgiving dinner. Would you rather sit down here and feast on it, or would you rather take some of this snack stuff? I thought that was quite interesting. Do we sit down and feast upon the word of Christ, or do we just take a nibble now and then? And that is what we need to do to endure to the end, is feasting on the word of Christ. In 3 Nephi 15, Jesus has just told the Nephites that he has fulfilled the law of Moses. He says, Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me, and endure to the end, and ye shall live. Endureth to the end will I give eternal life. I was going to use the scripture here about Moses and the brazen serpents, but we need to look to Christ and use that as an example. All they had to do was look at that serpent and be and wouldn't. And we need to endure to the end in looking at Christ. Moroni in Mormon 9, verse 29, tells us to do all things in worthiness. It says, See that ye are not unworthily. See that ye partake not of the sacrament of Christ unworthily. But see that ye do all things in worthiness also, and do it in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And if ye do this, to the end, ye will in no wise be cast out. This one is from Jacob. 9, verse 18, is 2 Nephi 9, excuse me. It's about the saints of the Holy One of Israel. And he says, they are they who have believed in the Holy One of Israel. They have endured the crosses of the world and despised the shame of it. They shall inherit the kingdom of God. I was thinking of all the examples in the Book of Mormon of these missionaries who went out. And they had to endure the crosses of the world and the shame of it. You think of Ammon and the sons of Mosiah, have, many of them were captured by Lamanites, put in prisons, mistreated, beaten. And yet, they believed in the Holy One of Israel, they endured the crosses, and they despised the shame of it. They came out stronger and with stronger testimonies and greater faith. Christ gave another one in 3 Nephi 26. And whoso taketh upon him my name, and endureth to the end, the same shall be saved at the last day. And I think we could spend an hour or two just checking out references in the Book of Mormon, what it means to take the name of Christ. How do we endure to the end? By taking upon us his name. Pyam gave the example of King Benjamin's people, the things he told them they needed to do to retain a remission of their sins. And the inference is the same thing in enduring to the end of calling on God daily, of 
living peacefully with one another, of teaching their children in those different items that he mentioned. Another one I like is in Mosiah 18, verses 8 through 10. I heard the preachings of Abinadi and believed them. And he had a few people who began to follow his teachings after he had to flee for his life. And enough of them believed him that they were going to have a baptism at the Mormon. And he talked to them about the covenant they would be making if they were to be baptized. And these who were to be baptized were to be willing to bear one, another bur one another's burdens that they may be light. They were willing to mourn with those that mourn. Comfort those that stand in need of comfort. Stand as a witness of God at all times, in all things, in all places that ye may be in, that ye may be redeemed of God, and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that ye may have eternal life. And baptism was a witness that man had made a covenant to serve the commandments, and in doing so, then the Lord could pour out, pour out his spirit more abundantly upon him. And there never becomes a time in our life when we do not need the Spirit of God poured out upon us. And enduring to the end is one of those who continue to have his Spirit if we follow all of these things that he tells us to. In Second Nephi again, the 32nd chapter, verse 9, Nephi says this, Ye must not do anything unto the Lord, save in the first place Ye shall pray unto the Father in the name of Christ, that he will consecrate thy performance unto thee, that thy performance may be for the welfare of thy soul. I think taking upon us the name of Christ. When we do things in his name, when we speak in his name, and when we pray in his name, we need to perform first by praying to him, that we can do what we do, for the welfare of our souls. I think this idea of taking the name of Christ in vain is sometimes when we get up and say things that Christ wouldn't say, and when we're doing things that are not what he would have us do. The scripture like, uh, that I liked best in this research was the one from Omni, uh, verse 25, it's a Malachi. And Malachi is the last one to write on the small plates. He has all the writings of Nephi and Lehi, and their important doctrines on Christ. And to me, he gives just sort of a capsule of what the gospel should be about. And he doesn't have any children, so he knows that King Benjamin is a just and a good man. Small plates over to King Benjamin. He says, I will do this, exhorting all men to come unto God, the Holy One of Israel, believe in prophesying and in revelations, and in the ministering of angels, and in the gift of tongues, and in all things that are good, because all good things from, come from God. He has mentioned there the importance of all of these gifts of the Spirit that we should have, and we should endure in them. And now, my beloved brethren, I would to Christ, who is the Holy One of Israel, and partake of his salvation, and the power of his redemption, not ours, his. Yea, come unto him and offer your whole soul unto him, and continue in fasting and praying, and endure to the end, and as the Lord liveth, ye will be saved. In conclusion, I'd just like to repeat these particular ways we need to endure in the end. To the end, I meant endure. We have been sitting for a long time, I'm sorry. Endure to the end. One, in keeping the commandments of God. Two, in steadiness and faith in God. Three, in repentance and baptism, having perfect faith in the Holy One of Israel. Four, following his example of the Son of the Living God. And then five, relying wholly upon the merit of Christ. Press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, have a perfect brightness of hope, a love of God of all and of all men, feasting upon the words of Christ. Those were all from 2 Nephi 31 on his
that, these last few. Six, we need to look unto Christ. Seven, do all things in worthiness. Eight, believe in the Holy One of Israel, endure the crosses of the world, despise the shame of Nine, take upon us the name of Christ. Ten, endure in having the gifts of the Spirit, as the Malachi said, and come unto Christ, partake of his salvation and the power of his redemption. Offer your whole souls as an offering unto him. Continue in fasting and praying. If we could endure in a positive, growing manner, then we will have eternal life. And the only way is by having the Spirit of Jesus Christ and following him and having that power that comes to us through him. And I pray that we can do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.